I'd now like to show you how we can create a uh, device configuration profile. Uh, and we can do that by starting out here in endpoint.microsoft.com. Click Devices, scroll down, and you'll see Configuration Profiles. Now, Configuration Profiles is sort of like what we had in our domain environment. We had GPOs, Group Policy Objects, but um, you know that was one of those powerful tools we had as an admin. Still technically have, but as you know, Microsoft is trying to now more control things in the cloud as opposed to on-premise. But one of the downsides, of course, with on-premise GPOs is that they could only really manage Windows devices. With um, configuration profiles, device configuration profiles, we have the ability to um, control more than just Windows devices. If you click Create the Profile, you can see all the platforms that are available. Okay. So very, very cool. I'm going to choose Windows 10 and later. And then from there, I have a choice of creating um, a, uh, a configuration profile that's from a settings catalog or from a template. Now, I will warn you, this is yet another one of these screens that seems to change every week. So don't be surprised if things look a little different. As I, you might have already heard me say many times, you just got to get used to the fact that screens are constantly changing. And yes, I do try to update videos and things like that, but it's a never ending battle, you know, to try to try to update videos every week. It's just not possible. Um, so just be aware that, you know, things can't, things are going to change here. We'll start out by just looking at templates and then we'll talk about settings catalog. Essentially, you get the same result. Um, with templates, Microsoft has grouped together uh, a series of different settings that we can implement. And you can see right here would be administrative templates. This is sort of like what we had in GPOs. We had an area in a group policies called administrative templates that would let us manage things like desktop settings and all that. You have, you can create what's called a custom, um, a, a custom profile. This is going to let you uh, point to some settings that are available. Um, well, I should say it's going to let you en enable or disable something on the device, perhaps, that Microsoft has not added to this list yet. And that's going to be done by XML. You have delivery optimization that gets into updates. You can manage um, uh, update updates involving, uh, when I say delivery optimization, that involves peer-to-peer uh, -peer updating where computers can update themselves from the Internet. But not. I'm not going to explain all the details on all that right now. It's kind of outside the scope of what I'm explaining, but just giving you a quick overview. You have um, device firmware configuration interface, device restrictions. This is going to be the one I look at here with you in a second. This is probably one of the most important ones that we have available to us. Uh, you have device restrictions related to Windows 10 Team. Then you got domain join if you want to join the domain. Uh, addition upgrade, email management, endpoint management, identity protection, imported administrative templates. This is if you import from group policies. That's a feature that uh, they're starting to support. Kiosk settings, defender for endpoint settings. You can manage network boundaries. You have PKCS number 12, um, certificate settings that gets into um, public key cryptography services, which allows you to import export certificates. Uh, into this and or control the certificate settings through here and this is where you could import the certificate settings Then you have simple certificate enrollment protocol this is for um, being able to deploy uh, automate automate the process of deploying certificates you have secure assessment for education shared multi-user devices trust you can specify all the trusted certificates on a device you can configure VPN settings Wi-Fi settings you can monitor health wired network there are hundreds and hundreds of settings that can be managed just like inside of a, a Microsoft GPO there are hundreds of things that can be configured here and I definitely you know it's one of those things you should probably jump in and just kind of look at some of the different features yourself because there are so many things you can do and you can you can look up their documentation for more information on some of these various ones you can also hover over the letter I and it'll sometimes give you a good description of some of these I'm gonna click on device restrictions we'll click create all right, we'll give this a name. All right, I'm going to say New York device config. All right, we'll click next. And from there, here's all of these various setting, settings categories we can uh, utilize. So we have app store configuration. If we want to block or allow it, you can see all these things that could be uh, turned on or turned off as far as an app store goes. Um, 
Some of this is only related to mobile versions, though, of the operating system. Then you have cellular and connectivity. So enable and disable certain things, like if I wanted to turn off NFC, near field communication, turn off Bluetooth, I could do that. Um, I don't really want to do that because that would turn my mouse off in this case because I'm using a Bluetooth mouse. But uh, anyway, cloud and storage management, cloud printer management, uh, control panel, uh, settings here. All these things in control panel, for example, I didn't want somebody personalizing or using any personalization features. I could block that if I wanted to. All right. So a lot of, uh, a lot of fun stuff there I could do. Display. This is going to let you control the graphics driver interface if you have a special type of graphics driver interface file. You have general configuration that could be uh, enabled or disabled if you wanted. All right. For example, maybe I don't want anybody using the camera. Maybe I don't want anybody using OneDrive Sync. Actually, we'll leave that one on. Maybe I don't want anybody using Cortana. Maybe I don't want anybody using uh, USB. Um, so those are some of the things there you could do. And we got messaging settings. We can manage the Microsoft Edge. They tell you legacy version 45 and earlier. Network proxy configuration if your company's using a proxy. Password settings. Now, I would like to warn you, keep in mind, if your device is part of a domain, it will use the domain uh, settings when it comes to password policy. So this is only going to work for uh, non-domain devices. Then you got per app privacy settings. Personalization, if you wanted to point to a specific wallpaper you wanted somebody to use. Uh, printer information settings, projection settings, reporting and telemetry, search configuration information, things uh, settings that you can change. The start screen can be modified. Turn things on and off there. You can actually create custom uh, start menus if you want. Defender smart screen, so you could require that or or not. Uh, Windows Spotlight. If you don't know what Windows Spotlight is, that's a feature that um, it's when you go to log on to Windows, it'll change the wallpaper um, screen that, that's being used. I'm going to turn that off because it uses uh, bandwidth, so some people like to turn it off. Then you've got uh, Windows Defender Antivirus, so you can configure some of the antivirus settings if you want. And then Power Settings. You can configure some of the power settings of the device if you want. So anyway, you can look through all of those. There's lots and lots and lots of settings there. I've, I've configured a few things I want, and then I'll click Next. If I wanted to apply Scope Tag, I could. I can go with Assignment here, and this is where I would assign the group, and User, User and Device Group. So I'll just say, click on uh, Choose New York. And if I had Exclusion, remember that Exclusions will always overrule Inclusion. So if, if I included a group that had John Christopher in it, for example, and then I added another group that also had John Christopher in it. Well, this would not end up being applied to John Christopher because he would be in an excluded group. So I click next, and you can also say assign the profile if the operating system edition matches one of these operating systems here, if I want. And then another thing I could do is I could say assign if a certain version of that operating system. So that's something else that's pretty neat you can do. I'm going to turn that off though. I don't want that. Um, and then at that point we would click next and then we could review the things we've done, disable camera, USB, Cortana, Spotlight, all that. And at that point we're applying this to New York users and devices. We'll click create. All right. Does take a little a little bit of time to show up. There it is. And of course, you know, whatever the device is that you're applying this to, if you wanted to kind of force it to happen a little bit quicker, you could go over to the device and, you know, you could you could tell it to sync. But something else I want to do real quick here. Let's go back over to um, devices and go to configuration profiles. And let's create, this time, I want to create this. I want to use, instead of... Um, doing the templates method, let's use the settings catalog. So the settings catalog just takes every setting that's possible and pulls it all in and lets you um, choose what you want. So, and I'll show you what I mean. We'll call this New York config from settings catalog. All right. Um, in the real world, what you generally want to do is kind of think about what 
you're trying to turn on or turn off and name the policy based on that. But we'll look at what we're going to turn on and turn off once we get in here. So we'll click next. We're going to click add to add the settings we want. And so you're going to see this massive list now of all these different settings and all that, that you can configure. All right, I'm going to use administrative templates and I'm going to go to this is the same things you would see inside of a group policy desktop desktop and um, like for example on my client computer here I've got this wallpaper this uh, exam lab practice wallpaper that I've I've created and I'm gonna maybe I want to have that disabled right so we'll go over here to where it says desktop wallpaper um, and we could add to these two things here uh, if we want so uh, wallpaper name wallpaper style actually you know what why don't we uh, let's do this double check everything here yeah yeah let's go ahead and add those two things right um, so we've added those two things here that we want anything else that I want to add I don't think there's anything else that I want to add here All right, so then I can keep um, do that. We'll go right back over here. So that Google Chrome, I could manage some of the Google Chrome settings if the user has Google Chrome installed. Microsoft Teams. All right. So lots of stuff here that you can click on and you could turn on or turn off if you wanted to using this capability okay alright so once you've selected what you want in this case desktop wallpaper user I'm going to so I could say let's enable that we could specify a wallpaper name if we want and then a wallpaper style if we want right um, and, and specify what you know what exactly we want to do there so if we had a specific wallpaper um, you know we'll just we'll say uh, blank dot jpg or something and we'll just say stretch that across the screen right and then we will we're ready to click uh, next okay now we'll click next we'll specify our assignment which will be New York to users and devices. We'll click select, next, and create. All right. And so now we have our uh, little profiles set up. One created from the template, one created from the, um, the settings catalog. Go over here to Devices, Windows, and we will click on our N NYC 11B machine. We'll tell it to sync, and we'll let that synchronize. Now this will take a few minutes, and um, sometimes you might have to reboot the computer too if it's changing something like a wallpaper, but if we jump back over to my machine, you're going to see that my wallpaper is gone. So it is no longer using my exam lab practice wallpaper that I created it's using a, a blank screen and mainly mostly because what I did is I pointed to a wallpaper that didn't exist you can point to wallpapers across the you can give it a URL if you want um, you can specify a URL and it will um, it will it will do that so uh, anyway that hopefully helps you understand the idea of a configuration profile uh, how Intune is going to use configuration profiles to uh, make changes to machines. Now, just so you know, because I get this question a lot, sometimes people ask me, well, what happens if the device is also part of a domain, right? If it's part of a domain and it's tied to Intune as well. And so let's say we had a, a wallpaper policy that's been configured using a GPO in a domain and we have configured a Intune policy that's configured the wallpaper and so the two are going to conflict at that point well I'm gonna go ahead and always tell you this 
any time there is a conflict between something Intune does versus something group policies do in your domain, the group policies will always win. So the domain policy would win. If you had a wallpaper that was a picture of an ocean coming from the domain, and you had a wallpaper that was a picture of a mountain coming from Intune, the domain ocean wallpaper would win. Okay, That is always going to be the case. There's no way around that. Uh, the reason Microsoft did it that way is because they realize that people have had policies in place in their domain for decades now, and they don't want to cause problems for those. So they've automatically made it where Intune is going to get overruled. And part of the reason Intune is going to get overruled is because of the fact that um, when policies get applied using Intune, they get, they get applied to what's called the local policy on a machine. And the local policy always gets overridden by domain policies. So that's just the way that it works. All right. But hopefully that helps you now understand uh, how all that works. One more quick uh, answer question I want to answer that sometimes people ask is what happens when you have multiple configuration uh, profiles like we do, and let's say they conflict. Okay, so let's go back over here to devices in endpoint manager, or I'm sorry, endpoint.microsoft.com, uh, which is in tune. We'll go back over to config policy, and um, we have these two uh, configuration policies. Now they don't conflict in our case, but what if they did? Okay, well, I'm going to show you Microsoft's answer to this, their documentation on this. Okay, they tell you in this little article here, and you can find this article by doing a Google search. I would do it's the common questions, answers, scenarios, and in tune. Okay, but if you read what it tells you here, says when two or more policies are assigned to the same user or group then the setting that applies happens at the individual setting level okay and it says for compliance policy settings always have precedence over configuration policies so if there's a compliance policy it's always going to have um, precedence over config configuration profile if a compliance policy evaluates against the same setting in another compliance policy then the most restrictive compliance policy setting applies but this is the one we care about right now. If a configuration policy setting conflicts with a setting in another configuration policy, this conflict is shown in Intune and manually resolve these conflicts. So they're, they're basically telling you, it says, in the Intune admins, and there are a few places you can create config policies, including group policies, analytics, and more. If there's a conflict and you have multiple policies, then check all the places you've configured policies. Also, the built-in reporting feature can help with uh, these conflicts. So you can use Intune reports to find out if there is a conflict. All right. All right. So that's going to do it. Hopefully that uh, now helps you with understanding the device configuration policy, uh, profiles that we deal with in Microsoft Intune. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again. <laughs>